In this demo, I am going to show you the new script editor. I am going to set up a validator that is going to run a jQuery query with the value of a custom field and make sure that there are no other issues within the same project having that custom field. So let's take an example. On the resolve transition, we want to make sure that there are no other issues that have this matching widget ID. If we look at a query, this is a sample query that we could use. We can see that there are two, so we want this transition to fail. In the normal way, we go to the workflow. In this case, however, I'm going to use resolve issue transition as an example. I'm going to add a validator, and I'm going to choose simple script validator. This just lets us return true or false to govern whether the transition is going to be allowed. For the error message, in the case that it's not allowed, we will say something like, there's already an issue having this widget ID, and the field will be widget ID. Let's write our script. So with the new editor, we can just type a part of a class and then press control space. Component accessor is the one that's going to get us the things that we need. So select that, and in this case, to execute the query, First of all, we need a query, and to do that, we need a jQuery query parser. So say we get components and jQuery query parser. As you can see, I have typed the minimal amount of text that I need to match class, so saving myself time and effort. We are calling this a parser. Let's see what we can do with this parser. We can pass a string and turn it into a query. In our case, it will be something similar to what we saw in the previous window. We're going to say the issue from the current project, which will be issue project object key. If you find you need more space, you can either expand to the right or you can go full screen. In our case, we're going to stay in this mode. We can use the CF values map which will give us access to all of our custom fields. The custom field is called widget ID. If I mistype this, we get a warning saying that we can't look up this type of field. The type of this is a select list. So to get the actual value, we need to call value on it. So we want to say widget ID equals the value of widget ID. Let's assign this to a variable query. To execute the query, we need a search service. Let's call it searcher. What can we do with a searcher? We can run a search, but we don't actually need all of the search results. We just need the counts. We care if there is an existing one or if there are none. We can choose search count. We probably don't care about whether the user can see the other issues. So we can say we use search count over our security. Now, let's get a bit more information about this. We can press Control J on the method and it will open up the Java doc where we can read Atlassian's documentation on this method. In this case, it's going to return a number, the number of matching hits. We need to pass in the user. If we look at the binding variables, we can see that we have the current user available to us. We could get it via the API. However, we can use it here, the one that's passed to us. We need current user and query, which we already have. Now we can just return true if the count is zero or false otherwise. That's all we need here. As you can see, we can check for errors and there are no errors found. We pass type checking that doesn't guarantee things work but gives us a fighting chance. Let's save this in the usual way. Publish the workflow and we can attempt this transitioner. The transitioner should be blocked. If we look at the query, we already have two issues that have this value. The validator kicked in, found those existing issues, so it's blocked us doing the transition. I'm trying a different one here and that has also succeeded. That was issue four and we can verify that so it's all working as expected. Mm -hmm.